another episode of Auto Fetish Detail, and I'm going to bring you into the inner sanctum of Darren's car. Why am I going to do this? Well, for a very specific reason, and that is to answer some very specific questions. Any video I produce will be followed up by a thousand different questions, regardless of how comprehensive I did or did not get. Why am I talking in this voice? I don't know. This is my late night DJ voice. Sometimes I throw this on just to create a little added drama to the moment. But with that said, no, seriously. Okay, so the question is this. Darren, I get it. You like the Q7 detailer, which I do. It's very versatile, which it is. But virtually every question that I answer, I know it's going to be followed up by additional questions. So the question, and this is dedicated to you hundred plus guys that reach out and ask me those follow-up questions. And what have we all been told? There is no such thing as a dumb question. Regardless of whether you think it's dumb, it's only dumb until it happens to be your question that you want answered. So in my goal to offer you a valid answer to that dumb question, that's not really a dumb question, it's a very valid question. Every question begets an answer. Every answer begets more questions. It's just a very deep wormhole. One in which I don't mind going down. With that said is I'm gonna show you exactly what I do. WWDD, what would Darren do? Well, I'm gonna show you exactly what Darren does do. I know, get to it Darren, show us what you do already. Well, after I do that, I'm gonna bring you back around. I'm gonna tell you why Darren does what he does or why does he do or use what he does use or do? That was a little confusing. Nonetheless, here we have my car. It's made up of many, many materials. Leather, plastic, rubber, vinyl slash plastic material, suede, Alcantara, Alcantara, depending upon who you ask. So there's a whole lot of materials. There's carbon fiber in here. There's glass on the inside. There's a very porous type of fabric on these uh, B pillars on the inside. There's many, many materials. So I get the confusion. The good news is that, wait for it, this product is safe on anything that I have ever found in any car. Yes, included uncoated car leather, which most of you will never be able to find. To this day, I only know of one car, which is a truck, the Ford King Ranch Edition, has uncoated car leather. It's meant to weather and age. So even this product will not damage it. But just because it won't damage it doesn't mean that I use it on every material within my car. But I'm gonna show you exactly what I do do. And then, like I said, we'll come back around and I'm gonna tell you why I choose this product. Why don't we start with the door panel? The door panel itself represents many materials. We have leather, we have a not carbon fiber, but it's a metal type of coated trim piece. We've got some aluminum door handle here. We've got leather here with some accent stitching. We have a textured vinyl um, uh, ledge here, vinyl here. So we've got many materials right there. So my rule is, and yes, I have gloves. Do I need protection for this particular product? No, I do not. It is completely safe for my product. That does not mean, that does not mean I suggest that you drink it. It just means that I'm merely wearing gloves because it makes me look, you know, cooler, more professional. Also, I have my blue. I don't know how blue it's gonna show, and I thought I'd go with blue since it's matched the logo. How about that for aesthetics? This is brought to you by Auto Fiber. Are they sponsoring this video? No, they are not. I just happen to be good friends with Ian and they make a pretty damn good microfiber cloth. So do you spray directly? You can. The problem what you need to know is that whatever you spray, you're gonna have to get into it. So there's some very tight seams and crevices here. So in order to manage the moment better, rather than less, is I spray my cloth. So I spray my cloth. Now I use it to wipe it down. It has a surfactant in it that is a form of a cleaner. There is no waxes or silicones of any kind in this 
Q7 detailer. It is body shop safe. That's one of the winning attributes as to why I choose it personally. Now you will not find all this specific information on the back because this is packaged for commercial use. It's just that now it's available for the retail use. And I love it, love it, love it. I've been using it for over 15 years. And yes, I am now a vested, uh, well, let's just say I've got some skin in the game. You can interpret that however you want. Point is, is I have skin in the game. But that does not diminish its attributes. I would not put skin in the game unless I love the product. Though the real question was this, Darren, I get it. It's safe for vinyl, it's safe for leather, but can I use it on trim pieces like this? Can I use it on metal pieces like that? Now I know some of you are out there saying like, duh, are you kidding me? That's really a question. Well, like I said, it may seem like a dumb question to you until you're the guy asking that dumb question to the rest of the audience. So there is really no such thing as a dumb question. So yes, it is safe for everything. It just doesn't mean I use it on everything. This entire door panel, yes, I will use it on every material, but I wanna manage my product by spraying it directly onto the cloth itself. That way I can manage it. It has a surfactant in it, so it's a type of a cleaner. A surfactant is, is essentially a glorified term for soap, meaning it has some abilities. I mean, really, you could say that water is a surfactant. H2O, it's made up of different molecules, so therefore it's a combination, but it's not a surfactant in the true sense of a chemical or a chemist surfactant. Point is, is water is a natural solvent. So I literally could touch up the interior of my car with water and it would be completely safe. The difference between just straight water and this is this. This is not going to continue to dry out my materials like a water would. So at a level that you could say that this almost adds a level of protection even though it has no silicones or waxes or other oils and greases in it. Um, that's going to make it shiny or anything like that. And that's one of the reasons I love this product is because not only does it retain the stock appearance, but it retains the stock feel of it. It does not change the surface tension. There's a $10 word for you or phrase for you. Surface tension, which means that you can apply a heavy silicone based or solvent based dressing. It's not only going to change the appearance, but it's going to change the way the material feels. I want the interior of my car to be clean. I want it to look the way it was intended to look originally, and I want it to feel that way. I don't want to feel my leather and have it feel non-leather-like, or my vinyl and have it feel non-vinyl-like. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but that's one of the winning attributes in my world as to why I use this product. So let's dive deeper into that wormhole called my car. So check this out, party people. This is my badass electronic steering wheel. If I turn it on, um, I'm not gonna do it because the key's behind me. So there's a way to turn this on by hitting both of these little buttons here and you can do lap time. So it's really, really cool. It's like a $2,100 upgrade. Uh, anyhow, I never use it because I don't race this to the track. Point is, is this is synthetic suede like material. Most people would go into freak out mode if you've reached for your quick detailer and thought, oh yeah, let me use it on that very porous material. Well, guess what? I have used this on this. I'm spraying it directly on this and this is not the first time I've done it. So because this has a surfactant in it, a type of soap, it's actually better or more effective at cleaning stuff than water. Now let's see what came off. It's hard to see. I don't even know if it's gonna show up, but there's a little bit of skid marks in the form of dirt on this towel now. If it's white, you would be able to see it more clearly. Point is, is that it does not change this. It simply cleans it. It's not gonna ruin it, but that's for you to decide. It also does not change the way it feels. I've been testing this now for about a month and it blew my mind when I talked to my partner who formulated this stuff and I said, Tom, uh, WTF, how is it that I can use this on porous material and it doesn't wreck it? Well, he went into this big dissertation about chemistry and all that stuff and my eyes started to glaze over as much as I wanna learn, but it's just overwhelming in a good way. So 
you've got all these materials. Up here, we've got some carbon fiber. I've got my leather. So let me pull you in and let me show you precisely me using this stuff. I'm going to spritz my towel. And then we're gonna come in. Now, remember the rule. I never, as far as I can remember, I remember, which did not even make any sense. What I'm trying to illustrate is that I have to remember to never set this container on anything that is more sensitive. What I mean by that is this. There may be times where there may be a subtle breach, crack, hole, whatever in your bottle. And let's say you set it on the leather and now it continues to wick out or ooze out or drip out. Well, that will be unwanted. I would rather have it do that on the carpeting than on my leather or other type of material. Preferably, I'm gonna set it outside of the car. So that's just one of the rules to keep you and your world safe. Let's check this out. There's my carbon fiber. Using it on the carbon fiber. It's got this little dial. This dial is made up of metal. It's got a metal bezel. It's got a plastic piece in the middle here. It's got all kinds of stuff going on. Got my shifter knob. Once again, it's made up of leather. It's got leather on the inside here. And it's got carbon fiber here. And then a plastic insert here. So there's all kinds of materials. The point is, is that I can use this on everything. My leather seat, wipe it. Creates a little shine as it evaporates, but then it goes into completely stock appearance and stock feel. What I do not use it on is the leather on truly porous materials. Once again, it's not gonna hurt it. It's just that I choose not to use it because it really is just not intended for that. And it's really not gonna serve me any purpose because I'm gonna default to an all purpose cleaner for that. I've got my threshold plates. I've got this plastic threshold plate here and then this rubber gasket here. Now look at the side, I've got these controls. For example, this is where someone asks like, oh Darren, I, I get it, you can use it on everything but I've got these like silver metal type buttons that control my seat. Is that product safe for it? Well, I hope the conclusion is yes, it is safe. So here I am using it on those controls, completely safe, perfect and ideal for dusting, light smudges, greases, oils. It's not a heavy duty cleaner, but it's perfect for maintaining the inside of my Beamer in showroom-like condition. So in 3,648 words or less, that is my answer to, oh, about 100 plus questions. Hey, Darren, what about this? What about that? What about this over here and over there? So I hope I've clarified that for you. Why do I use this? Once again, I use it because of many reasons. It's true waterborne technology, which means that water is the carrier for the active or inert ingredients. It's body shop safe. Most of you, that will be a non-issue in your world. In my world, occasionally I'm doing work at body shops. That becomes very critical. And just so you know, the body shop is different than the true inner sanctum called the spray booth. I'm not ever gonna bring this into the spray booth, but I can take it into the body shop itself. In my world, that's important. I'm already using it, so it means I don't have to buy another product in order to take care of the inside of my car. That makes it versatile, versatile. Kind of like fragile, as in the Christmas story. Um, sorry, I defaulted back into my Wayback Machine. So it's, very, it's a very versatile product. Uh, it's got a surfactant in it. I've got a video where I literally use it as my go-to product in how to clean car windows that to me has outperformed every other process, every other product that I've ever used to clean car windows. But that's just me in my world. Uh, I will put those links underneath the uh, description box below. Uh, you can find this product with a link on the, on the description box below also. Okay, until the very next video. And if you like what you see, by all means, give it a thumbs up. Give me your feedback. Let me know. Uh, how about this? You answer this. Did you think that was a stupid question? And really to restate the question again, it's this. About a hundred plus guys reach out after certain videos and say, hey, Darren, 
and they just want to work themselves further down the wormhole because, for example, let's say you bought a brand new car. When you bought a brand new car or you have recently purchased a brand new car, you are highly emotionally attached to that car. So your level of attachment is so much more significant than a guy that's owned his car for five years. So yes, I accept you're going to overthink things. That's normal. That's okay. I'm trying to reel you back off of the edge of the cliff by letting you know exactly what this is safe for virtually anything on the inside of your car. I will add this as a parting note. I do not choose to use this on any of the infotainment screens, navigation screens, simply not because it's going to hurt it, but because those screens typically come with a coating that's an anti-glare coating. None of those coatings are created equally. They're all created uniquely. Therefore, I never know what I'm going to get. I don't have to overthink those screens because I'm going to simply, because I always carry distilled water with me, I'm going to simply default to straight distilled water on those screens. But with that said is I do use this product on the clear screen of the dash or the instrument cluster. So there's where the nuances come in. Once again, you could dissect any moment, any topic into a, a hundred thousand bazillion parts and scrutinize and analyze and ask questions about each of those. It's a very deep wormhole of this thing called life and this thing called auto detailing. Okay, with that said, we will see you guys on the next video.